G'day folks. Well, it's time to look at the uh, Furuno uh, display unit. It's a 1970s vintage radar, marine radar system. Uh, you can see the uh, scanner unit autopsy and operation in previous video. That's currently sitting outside on top of the trolley. Um, I've just been wiping it down and familiarising myself with the controls and things. And I'm almost inclined to think there is a way to connect this to the main scanner without any other kind of inter inter intermediate unit. This might be all there is to it. Uh, there was an autopilot system stripped out, which this was part of, but I believe the other control cabinets may have been for something else, probably for control, trim and adjustment, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to open it up and just have a look inside and see if there's a multi-pin connector. If there is, I might even be able to connect the uh, remains of the scanner to it, minus the magnetron, and at least do some kind of operation. There isn't much I can do without a working magnetron, but to be honest, I don't think that's the kind of thing you want to operate in a residential area anyway. It's pretty dangerous stuff. So, yeah. Compass safe distance, 1.5 metres. Steering equipment, 1 metre. So you've got to space these units apart so far or it probably interferes with it. <laughs> yeah. We'll open it up, put some power to it, see what it does. It'd be nice to actually get it to work, but I don't think that's the kind of thing we could really do here anyway. Okay, so on the front panel, <coughs> we seem to have, well attached to the side, this is an electronic range marker, which has its own separate wiring connections and things, which aren't connected to anything, the unit's just sitting on them at the moment, but yeah, I don't really know what any of this means, I could look it up later anyway. This might be a separate autopsy, I think. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but I'm guessing it's just a little LED readout, or probably a vacuum fluorescent tube, since it has brightness adjustment. Um, this main unit, that there, okay, that rotates the uh, ranging cal calculator or whatever that would be I suppose it's a ranging thing each one of these bars probably represents so many miles you can rotate it probably depending on your heading that sort of thing or if you want if you had a target over here and you wanted to range it you could probably scale it anyway um, there's three of those, I'm guessing they're for just aligning the CRT or something, they're probably retainers for the CRT assembly. That, there's a toggle switch. Rotate, toggle. Oh, I wonder if it's servo driven as well. That there, not a push button or anything, it doesn't do anything. Up here, there's a little meter, 0 to 10 and seems to be part of whatever that is, probably intensity or something, signal intensity uh, probably power divider or something like that goes all the way up to what looks like 18 that, don't really know that one's all bent over but it's still connected and working that one there, maybe brightness or something I don't know, that's... See, I don't have a manual or anything, I don't know what any of this means. Main scanner power. I think this thing would control the whole unit. There probably isn't another secondary control cabinet to this. If I open this up, there is probably a big multi-pin connector on one of the control boards. Um, yeah, i just got to get those screws out and lift the cover off. But first I'm going to put this camera on bat on battery charge and get the cover and everything off and get it ready and then we'll go from there. Okay, it's kind of interesting in here. I don't think I'll completely dismantle this or anything. It would be nice to get it going again, but I've found a lot of damaged capacitors and other interesting problems. But there's some interesting tech in this thing. It's a big rotary switch. Kind of interesting. Uh, that there goes up into 
something. Maybe that. Um, more rotary switches, a trimmer. <coughs> Notice they're still using Gorilla Snot back then, which is that PCB component mounting glue. It goes uh, conductive after a while. It goes dark, goes from yellow like uh, contact adhesive. Goes from yellow like contact adhesive then to a dark baked brown. And you notice any component leads sitting in it go green with oxide because it's become conductive. See that stuff there hasn't broken down as badly. I was forever scraping it off PCBs in old VHS players because it was creating shorts between components. Um, that capacitor is blowing its bottom bung out, so that's toast. It's a 10 microfarad, 35 volt. Not uncommon. I'd say most of the caps in this thing are toast. Um, got the CRT assembly with a rotating neck ring. Or yoke part, actually. Got a part of the scanner itself, I suppose. Small transformer. Well, no, it's only two wires. That's a ballast. Uh, just as I thought, there's the multi-pin connector to go into the unit. So this and the rotating scanner head is all there was to the radar. The rest of the machine that got scrapped was probably the rest of the autopilot. So in theory, if I had the loom that went with this, I could just plug it in, but. At the moment it's sort of a wild goose chase to work out what pin does what and what goes where, which all goes into this main board. But those resistors look toasty. Yeah. Those resistors are crispy, so I don't think this will ever work again unless I replace them. I'm guessing them they're the same as these two. Looks like it. Colour banding's about the same. So I can replace them and at least try and get the thing to power up. I know you'll nag me till the day I die if I don't power this thing up. <laughs> and I honestly would like to see it work again. Not as a working radar unit, it'll never do that, but I at least want to get it to sweep mode. Just so you get the rotating line on the screen like your traditional old school radar. And then, well, if it's reliable enough, it'd make a nice little ornament in the workshop. But yeah, some of these caps look like they've gotten very hot. Which is a bit of a shame, but they're basic, cheap, simple caps, most of which I can pillage out of other electronics. So it's not too bad. They all look like 85 degree caps as well. But yeah, down here... There's a main transformer for control, which is 100 volt, that sort of thing. Um, those two there look like main DC input. Where's the flyback? There's what looks like a tripler or something in there, multiplier. But I can't see anything in the way of a uh, actual flyback transformer in here unless it's part of the multiplier but no, there's a lead going in, lead going out that's not it, that's a uh, that's the drive motor for the rotator the cover sort of wants to come off it's probably buried right down underneath that CRT assembly oh yeah it is too yeah, there is a flyback transformer, a very small one and it feeds into this big voltage multiplier and then down to the anode on the, on the tube which must be underneath so pretty straightforward sort of looks like a big oscilloscope inside and lots of chunky old componentry yeah it's alright, the plastic cap's gotten hot on that one it looks like it's about to blow but that can be deceiving when they put the plastic cover over the end Hmm. I shall investigate further another time. Meanwhile, you can enjoy this video. So there's a plug that goes to nowhere. There's a plug there. That's the coax from the um, input decoder. 
and that's the main connector to the uh, scanner unit. So it's all there, I just need the loom. Or to work out what pin does what and hardwire it. So in theory I could just disable the magnetron transformer, reset everything as it was and it should work but we just won't get any radiation emission or return. But I would just like to get this thing working as a whole and then worry about the rest of it. Anywho, hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. Hmm, I guess I should test this out before I do anything else with it. I know it's got blown caps and resistors and things. Whoops. Yeah, it's just finishing off the resistors. Hmm, 70s vintage smoke. Well, once you let the magic smoke out of electronics, they don't work anymore. Which is a shame. So, I'm going to have to replace those resistors. The other two next to them look alright. I don't know what wattage they'd be. They'd be fairly high wattage if they're that chunky, but I think these days you replace them with ceramics. Not sure. Oh well, at least we know magic smoke's going to come out. And I definitely know it's a 24 volt system. Because the taps on that transformer clearly say it. One of them is zero, the white one. The other one's 24 volts. So, yeah, mains go straight into 24 volt DC. And the rest of it's, well, coming out of that big transformer block. Oh, it was worth a try.